Hello, this is Mr. Beck. Uh, welcome to our next part in uh, building a game on Android. I don't know which number this is at this point. Quite frankly, I've lost track, but uh, they are in order on the website. At least I hope so. So anyway, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to make uh, the ship explode when it hits a target. And I'll kind of give you the upshot here. We're going to, when the ship hits a target, all right, it will disappear, and then we'll see this explosion occur. Watch this. All right. Just like that. And so that's the upshot of this. I've got everything ready, and I'm just going to kind of explain what we uh, need to do to accomplish that. So here I am inside of panel.java. And uh, I'm just up here at the very top underneath the class where we're declaring our global variables, OK? And uh, these are our new, I'm going to highlight it. You might want to pause the screen here. I'm going to try to be as direct as I can with this one. Here are our new uh, variables that we'll be using. We're going to have a matrix called debris position, OK? And that's going to track, um, we're going to make that a size of 20. Because when the ship is destroyed, we'll have 20 little pieces. Each one will have a different position at any given time. So we'll have the matrix class there to keep track of our position for each one. We've got a Boolean now called ship destroyed, OK? It's either true or false. The beginning of the game, of course, it's false. We have um, debris initialize. OK, so when the ship is destroyed, we're going to initialize the debris at that time. So the ship will be destroyed at which point we will calculate a position for all the debris and then send it flying off. So right now, debris initialize is set to false. At one point in the program, we'll set it to true and then immediately back to false as soon as we've initialized our first location for the debris. It starts off as false. And every uh, piece of debris is, of course, going to maintain a position x and a position y, 20 of those. Um, we have debris speed, OK? Uh, we'll be using that. And uh, every debris will have a rotation number as well. Now, inside of our constructor method here, we're just going to need to initialize one piece of this. And that would be our um, debris position, our global matrix here. So we'll need to go ahead and initialize that so that every member on the list is not null. And then we're going to jump down to our update. Uh, the first thing we should probably talk about an update is the spot at which we actually calculate the collision. Uh, pretty clear concept. We're just going to add a little bit to our distance formula from um, our earlier video, okay? And this is where we calculate uh, distance, okay? So once again, at the very top here, these turtles, that's the instance of our target class, right? We are looping through each of the targets, and we're going through and we're calculating whether or not the ammunition hits it, Okay, and we're incrementing score. Well, once we do that, and once we're done, you see, looping through the ammunition, we're going to go ahead, and this is outside of the for loop for the ammunition now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate for every turtle or target that we have, we're going to determine whether or not it is in uh, conflict or colliding with our ship. And in order to do that, we'll just use our distance formula. So we'll calculate, we'll take um, the x position of our target and, or excuse me, the x position of our ship. We'll subtract it from the x position of our target. We'll do the same for y. We will square both of them, add them together, take the square root to determine a distance. And if it's less than 20, we're going to set ship destroyed to true and debris initialized to true. Now, it's kind of important that we only do this in the case that the ship is, is uh, not destroyed. So once we set ship destroyed to true, OK, um, this if statement here, this basically just ensures that this only gets called one time in the event the ship touches a target. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we set, okay, um, debris initialize to true. So what I've done is up here at the very, let's see if I can find that. This is inside of our update method, okay? And what I've done is I've declared a matrix called local debris, and I'm setting it to um, a length of 20. And once again, we're going to populate this later on with all of our position rotation data, and then we're going to transfer that to the global matrix that we declared up above. And what this says is if debris initialize has been set to true, and we just demonstrated that with our distance formula below. We're going to go through and for, okay, for every debris position X that we have, there are 20. We're going to go through and we're going to load it with position X and position Y. Now position X and position Y are the position X and position Y of the ship. So for when we first initialize the debris, every piece of debris that we have is going to be initialized to position X and position Y. And I'll show you the graphic that I'm using for the debris here in a second. It's a very simple little white dot, basically. So we'll have 20 um, debris positions here that um, are initialized to X and Y. They'll all be the same. The debris speed is going to be set to the speed of our ship. And the reason why we create a debris speed and set it equal to speed is because as the target moves, as the game moves forward, speed is constantly being subtracted from. The ship is always slowing down. Uh, in this case, we're going to make the debris not do that. The debris, the debris will move at a constant rate, and we won't see it slow down. So I'm going to grab the speed of the ship. I'm going to put it into a variable called debris speed, and then I'm just not going to subtract from that, so the speed will be constant. Um, this one's kind of important here. We're going to do an, uh, we're going to create an instance of the random class. If you haven't already done so somewhere else. And for every debris rotation on the list, we're going to load it with a random value between zero and 359. Like this, casting it to a float. Now, we'll be using our formula that calculates speed vector, okay, how we calculate, you know, we make the ship move based on the direction that it's pointed. In other words, the rotation value of the ship determines which way it moves when you press the thruster button. Well, what we're going to do is for every piece of debris, we're going to load it with a random rotation value and then use that same formula so they all randomly will move um, in different directions based on their rotation value. So all 20 pieces of debris should have a random value between 0 and 359 um, that get loaded when the debris is initialized. And then the last thing we do is we set debris initialize to false because we only want to run this one time. Because once we have a position X, a position Y, and a rotation, we don't want to change those initial values, we want to either add or subtract and move them in a straight line. So by setting debris initialize to false, okay, this particular loop gets called one time and we have a set of values that are good that are based on the current position of the ship. All right, so This is where we're going to determine, we're going to actually take these, um, and let me show you the graphic real quick. This is just uh, kind of an aside, I guess. Here I am inside of the GIMP, and you can see this is a very small graphic. It's 5 by 5, and I, I just call it debris, you know. And uh, it's just a little JPEG, PNG, whatever, very small little dot. And I've initialized this graphic at the top of our program the same way we initialize the ammo pick or the target pick. So you'll declare a bitmap variable. 
and then in the constructor method, you'll initialize that little graphic. You have some clear exa examples, and if you've moved this far into the tutorial, you should be able to um, initialize a simple bitmap. If not, ask me, and I'll sort of walk you through that process. Well, here we are, where we're going to load the rotation data and the position data for every little debris dot that we have um, on a per, you know, every time the screen refreshes, it's going to be in a new position. So this is how we do that. Um, up here, I've got post rotate and post translate for the ship, position X and position Y. And it says, okay, if, if the ship is not destroyed up here at the top, we're going to go ahead and we're going to load this ma local matrix M with position X and position Y, okay? And we're going to do all the things that we've been doing with the ship, right? However, you know, if the ship is destroyed, all right, we're going to go through and we're going to start to move our debris instead, all right? Now, this method here, where we determine position based on rotation and speed, okay, is the same that we're using for the ship. All right, so we take debris speed x, debris, sp de debris speed y. We run it through our formula, all right, using uh, debris speed over here and the, that random debris rotation that we have for every um, piece of debris on the list. And this is a loop that'll go through 20 times. All right, and then we simply add those values to the position x and the position y. So. The first time through, position X and position Y, debris position X and debris position Y is set to the same position as the ship, right? The second frame, okay, all 20 pieces of debris will move in a different direction. The, th the next refresh, a little bit further. The next refresh, a little bit further. So we're moving our debris outward using this. Um, we have a matrix that is called local debris. We're calling post rotate and we're just passing it our simple rotation value. We're not increasing rotation. This rotation value, um, we aren't really using. You probably set that to zero and it would be okay. And we are passing this local debris matrix here, debris position X, and debris position Y. And then we're going to set our global position to those values. So take a look at that, get it in. And as you sort of work through this and you type this particular formula in and you start to see it work uh, and you compare it to how we're moving the ship, it'll start, it, it makes sense. Okay, so now that we have values that are being loaded into our global matrix here, debris position, we need to go up inside of on draw. And uh, I, I went ahead and I did the same thing here. So if the ship is not destroyed, okay, let's go ahead and draw the ship at the correct position that we're calculating. However, if the ship is destroyed, let's loop through all of our debris positions and draw the debris graphic, which is that little dot, at the position that's been calculated. And what you get are 20 little dots that move in 20 different directions. So, once again, here is the example. Here's our ship. Right now, the value of ship destroyed is set to false, right? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move towards our target here. And once the distance is less than 20 between the ship and the target, we're going to set ship destroyed, destroyed to true and debris initialized to true. And then we're going to begin moving all 20 pieces out in random directions. So based on a random rotation value for each piece, they move outward. All right, so that's it. Uh, good luck. With that, if you would like the full source code for this program, go ahead and send me an email. I don't have that on my GitHub account right now. But uh, if you're interested 
send me an email and uh, I'll see what I can do. So thank you for your time and uh, good luck.